Hi, we're about to begin our painting Two Can Do It. So grab your stuff, let's get started. This painting requires a pencil and a ruler. You have your canvas in front of you. What I would suggest you do is let's put a mark right in the center of the canvas first. Center of your canvas, whatever size canvas you've got. Make a mark in the center, across and across the side, It'd be about there. So that's my mark in the center of the canvas. I don't know if you can see that, that's a mark there in the center of the canvas. I'm going to use that as the base point of my toucan's bill. Right. Now, load your palette up with green, blue, red, yellow, black, white. You'll be using all of them this time. So once you've got that loaded, let's start. We're going to draw the toucan first. Now the toucan's bill, if this is the bottom of the toucan's bill, Think of this as a horn. The toucan has a bill that goes, draw a line that goes at a right angle to the corner of your canvas. From there, that if that's the bottom of the bill, the bill does a little bit of a curve across the bottom, does a little bit of a curve across the top. I would say that this bill length, the back of the bill length, is probably about a quarter of the canvas across. If you were to divide your, can divide your canvas into quarters, if that's half, that would be about the half of that again. From that bill, I want to take the bill to about there on the canvas, not to the end of the canvas, just to about there. To do that, I'm going to make a round curve from that corner to that. Can you see that line there, round corner? Then the middle of the toucan's bill is lower. It's actually a wider portion across the top of his bill than the bottom. So I'm going to join that point there of his bill to this point here with another curve. That'll curve up that way. The bottom of his bill has a rounded edge and then I'm going to curve it up but not quite to the point of his bill there because the two cans the bottom of his bill is a little bit lower so he has a little bit of a lip an overbite if you were to draw his head from there from the corner of his bill in fact from about there we're going to draw his head which is like a pimple on the bottom of his bill. So that's his head. He has a bit of a, um, a chest that we're going to draw as well. So that chest is the same shape as you've done his head, but smaller. We're going to draw it from about the middle of his head here, and we're going to do a round shape that goes like that for his chest, maybe even a little bit longer. You could take a little bit longer. The rest of his body then curves down towards the bottom of the canvas. And from his head, we're going to join the rest of his body out of the canvas that way. The next thing that we have to do is his eye. His eye is approximately halfway across his bill. If you draw a circle there, that's where his eye is going to be. So it's about the same width, his eye is about the same width as it is from the edge of his bill. His bill has a little funny curve that goes like that. So that's what I want you to do for his head. Can you see all those lines there? We're going to join them up. Now there is a strelitzia to this picture. The strelitzia is here in the bottom section of the canvas. It is straight up line, almost a straight up line from the bottom of the canvas to about there. 
and then there's a curve goes the same angle as his bill almost same angle as that that's where the strelitzia goes so if you draw that from there there are one two three four five six points in a strelitzia this flower has it's like an array of petals that come out so the first one actually bends out like that from there bends out there the second one would probably be around there i'm just going to draw one line so it gives me an idea of where that strelitzia petal is going to go the next one will probably be about there the next one will probably be about there this one's probably the biggest of the lot so you can see it raised down like that then we have another one that goes up to there. Probably the same angle as the, the stem. And then the last one is there. So I've now got an array where I'm going to paint my petals. There's also another part of the strelitzia, which is part of the base of the flower which will come from there to there so if you just give yourself a little line there we're going to put a purple mark there later and we're ready to start right from here i want you to take that's your toucan from here i want you to take your biggest brush that one and we're going to make a yellow a pale yellow we're going to paint his beak and his chest area and paint a pale yellow so i'm going to wet my brush dry it off on my cloth that is always in front of my there i have a cloth right in front of my canvas so i'm going to dry my brush off on that cloth and i'm going to use a little bit of the yellow put it there and mix it with a bit of the white until i have a pale yellow quite like that pale yellow nice Okay, that pale yellow is going to be the top part of his beak here. So with the big brush, paint the top part of his beak in pale yellow. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be making, putting other colors on top of there. I want his face to be the same color. So here we go. I'm going to paint his whole face the same color. I as well. Let's get a little bit more water on that brush. So his face. And I can still see my pencil lines underneath, which is fine. You're going to need to see them. And I want to paint his chest. I'm going to make his chest a little bit longer, like that. So he's a deep chested bird, this one. There we go. Right. Now you will still see these pencil marks here. So we will paint over those just now, but you will see them as we paint this. We can still see this. If you want to cover over your pencil mark, just use a bit more white. Wait for that to dry and we'll use a bit more white again. Okay, let's move on. From here, we're going to move to the middle brush, which is this round pointed brush. That gives us a bit of control. I'd like to paint his beak orange which means I'm going to wet that brush, take a little bit of the red, just a little bit of the red, and stick it into the yellow palette section and add some yellow to it. And you'll see just a very little bit of the red makes a very strong orange straight away. So add lots of yellow until you have an orange color that you quite like. I like that color, so I'm going to keep that. I don't want too much paint on my brush, so you twirl the brush around until you have a point Right from there. 
going to paint around the edge of his bill with orange. So outline the edge of his bill like that with that orange all the way around. There we go. Now, as you did this shape for his head here, you're going to do the same shape on his bill, but at the top of his bill. So I'm going to make a round shape like that across the top of his bill. That's kind of where I need to be. So a round shape there across the top of his bill. Let me just tidy that up a little bit. But you don't have to be too tidy. With this In this picture, we're actually being a little bit more free. I also want to then add the bottom part of his bill here. I'm going to add a semicircle of orange into the bottom part of his bill there. There we go. It really doesn't have to be perfect because you'll see when the picture's finished, there's a lot more stuff that we need to fill in around here. I'm going to use that orange and give him just a few little strokes under his chin there because that is going to be a bit of a shadow underneath his chin. So while we're using orange, put a few little marks there. We're also going to give him a little bit of a shadow across the bottom of his chest there with that light orange. I want some shadow across the back of his head here too. So I'm going to put a few lines of orange, light orange across the back of his head. Not too many, you see. This is darker here, darker orange. Right, while we've got that orange, the Strelitzia is orange and purple, well, orange and blue. So we're going to use that orange. I'm going to see that orange that I created there. I'm going to use that again. And I'm going to make the Strelitzia. So Remember this one did a little bit of a bend. So I'm going to make that strelitzia come to a point. The petals come to a point like so. There we go. Going to make this one. It goes to a point and then comes into a, becomes a bit of a triangle, a thicker triangle towards the middle of the flower. So I'm using that as my guide point, the pencil mark. I'm going to do another one. Nice strong orange. And that one will be here. And it goes to a point there. Across the top of the flower. I want to fill up all the way to the bottom of this petal here. And then we've got another point that goes there. So now you have four sharp petals coming out of that flower that you've used those lines to give you a guidance. This one here is actually part of the flower that comes all the way down over these two, oh, over those four, to the base of the flower there, and so does this one. So you will finish by having one, two, three, four, five, six petals on the strelitzia. Okay. I'm going to wash that brush off. And use my blue, dry the brush on my paper in front of me. I'm going to use blue now. The blue is part of the outside cover of this flower. So I'm going to use that line that I made 
to begin the flower and I'm going to put a little bit of a curve on it like that. And that's going to be the outer petals of the Strelitzia flower. Remember these are tropical flowers. This one here now, this line we've got here, that I'm going to start with a little point there and bring it down towards the bulb of the flower. The bulb of the flower, where these two meet, the bulb of the flower is a little bit of a round bulb like that, that holds the whole flower together. So I'm just swirling my brush around till I've got a round, see, hold your brush there in the middle, swirl it around and you'll have an idea of where the round goes. Round size of that petal, <laughs> the bulb. So I'm following the line that I originally created with a pencil and I'm going to finish my flower off like that. Now this Strelitzia, these are outer leaves almost. So there is another leaf that will come off the Strelitzia. I'm going to put this leaf that goes that way. So it's up and goes to a point. That way. It's another leaf. These are rich tropical flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. You can even make it go off the edge of your canvas if you want. Like that. The bottom part of the beak is also going to be in blue but i think what we'll do is we'll put green down there first because i'm going to wash that brush off take my green i want this green to be a little paler than it is here it's quite a dark green so i'm going to add put that green on the side there and add some yellow to this make a bit of a a lighter green there, beautiful lime colored green. Add a touch of white. Oh, yeah, I like that. Too much paint, so I'm gonna wipe that off my brush. And then that is going to be the basis of the bottom part of his bill. Just put that lovely lime green color. Remember in the tropics, the colors are bright and vibrant. So that's why this guy is going to be really bright and vibrant. I'm gonna paint the whole of the bottom of this bill like that with the green. You can see I'm not sticking as close as I could to those lines that I made because I'm going to outline all of this in black just now. So there we go, that's green there. I want some of that lovely green around his eye. Paint around the outside of his eye with that lovely green. Maybe give him a few swirls underneath that eye in the pale green. Blends a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of that green in the corner of his beak here, just as a little bit of a, a darkening in the beak. So I'm using some color here to make his beak a little darker. A bit more there too. There you go. Not a lot. We're going to start building up this color now. Right, when you are there, Wash that brush off, dry it off. His beak is actually going to be blue in the end. So I've loaded my brush up with blue and let me paint over that green with a bit of blue. It's blending in, you see. Here you go. Bit more blue there. Take it up to the corner. Remember this bottom beak doesn't quite go to around the top, to the top of his beak there. There we go. 
Now from there, we're going to paint a little bit of that pale yellow in a circle around his nose. So take your pale yellow again, and I'm going to put a little circle back into his nose there in pale yellow. Right, touch of red. Should we add a touch of red there? Wash your brush off, dry it off. I've got red, plain red. Let's load some plain red up on here. I think I want some plain red in the back of his head here. Just a little bit of a colour there. I'm also going to put some into the middle of his beak there. Darken that a little bit there. I'm going to put perhaps a little bit of red into the section around his nose. We've painted that circle there. A little bit of red there to make that darker. Here in the flower, let's put some red in there to make some shadows. So I'm going to put a bit of red in the back of the, each of these. At the back of the flower, it's got a bit of a sharp shadow. A little bit here, back of the flower there, and at the base where it joins. Right, let's see. Let's put some at the bottom of this one, at the bottom of that one. And let's colour this whole one in here red. That goes to a point. And the bottom of this one. I'm going to add a little bit of a diamond shape across the bottom of that as it bends. It's got a little bit of a kink. Right, we are so close to getting into the background. Let's retire this brush. We're now going to do the background. So I'm going back to this beautiful big brush. And this brush, I'm going to make a yellow, a little bit darker than this pale yellow that we used for the bird. So add a bit more yellow, add a bit of white, maybe a little bit more yellow. It's a bit darker than the pale yellow. That yellow I'm going to use across the top of the canvas. So let's paint the top of the canvas and around his beak. Around the bottom of his beak. You can see I'm not being 100% perfect. It doesn't matter if you are or if you're not. And we're going to paint around the Strelitzia with that pale yellow. There we go, around the Strelitzia. Underneath his beak. these parts down here. Down on the right hand side of the canvas I'm going to paint a little bit of that dark yellow on the left hand side of the canvas. Left hand side of the, the Strelitzia, like that. And let's fill in the bits around the Strelitzia with this round brush now. I've got a bit more control with this round brush, so I'm going to fill in these little bits here with the round brush. So the idea of the big brush is to cover as much space as possible, as quickly as possible. You move to the smaller brushes for the detail. So there we go, got a bit of detail in there. A bit more detail. You can see what I've done here is I haven't finished off this edge here. That's going to be green. It's going to be green leaves coming in there. So I've not finished that off at all. Right, some more yellow around here. Underneath his bill, underneath his face. The 
some yellow in there. And I think that's about enough for me. That pale green that we had originally, that color is the color I'm going to use to paint over this yellow now. So with this brush, I'm going to paint some of this pale green here underneath the strelitzia, underneath his bill, underneath his chin. And cover this section of the canvas with that pale green. Now you can see if your if your paint is still wet and this happens, absolutely no problem. Fill it up. Paint over it. Right, need some more pale green down here. And that means I'm going to have to make some more green. So we'll run out of green there. There we go. Mix some more green like that. And here in this part here. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing the color of the background in increments. The pale green is a precursor to a darker green and then an even darker green. I'm building up the color in between the petals. like that. So it started to get a little bit darker in this corner here. Now I have my green, pale green and the darker green. The jump between these two is a bit much. So I just want to add a little bit more green and yellow together here to make same color pale green a little bit darker. So in increments, here we go. I'm going to add this here, down the bottom here, underneath his chin again. A few more slashes of that pale, that darker green in there. Slightly darker. A few more lines of those. and build that all the way down to the bottom. Like that. You can see that's starting to get a bit darker. And if you look closer, it's just brush strokes like that. So I'm just building up the color on top of the other color with small brush strokes. Okay, in between there, there's a bit of white, so I'm just gonna add some more darker green in there and some darker green in there instead of the white that you see there. Okay, from there, we're going to move to the darker green. That's the darker green. So I'm going to use that color, plain, that plain green color here. and underneath the flower there. So I'll fill this little gap up with a few lines of that darker green in between his chin and the flower. And if you look to see what has happened there now, the color is shaded from the yellow to the lighter green to the darker green. So you're getting a little bit of a shadow effect coming in there. Same thing's gonna happen over that side. If you want to make it a little bit darker, what you can do is add some blue to that green. 
add some blue to that green and you've got a slightly darker green again. You can add some of that colour into the middle and into these gaps here. Now we have a variation there of those greens. So that's what we're going to use on this side as well. And because this is a bigger area, we're going to get our bigger brush for that area. So let's wash that brush, put it away, and get the bigger brush again. That one there. As we did here, we're going to start with the lighter green. So that lighter green mix. I'm going to use that to put a bit of colour in this area here. Lighter green. See that? Take it off the side of the canvas here. I've added a little bit more water to this brush so that I can cover as much area as possible. And that also gives me a slight wash. So it's not a solid color. It's with the water, it's a slight wash. I'm going to make that go all the way around his beak and there as well. So he's got a slight wash of light green over the canvas. Use the middle color green now, that middle color green. And these are bamboo leaves. So what I want to do is turn this brush sideways. I'm going to use the sideways motion of this brush to make my bamboo leaves. So from here, I'm going to do that kind of motion. Gives me bamboo leaves. So I'm using the side of the brush and I'm flicking it out that way. So it comes to a point. Flick it up that way. Flick it that way. So I've got an idea that there's some leaves coming in there. Use a slightly darker green on top of that. And I can flick some more leaves over those with a slightly darker green, like that. It's starting to look like I've got leaves coming on the top of his head there. And then the plain green, use that to make something slightly darker around his head here with this brush. You can still see some lighter patches in there. I want to cover these lighter patches on the left hand side of the canvas. I want the left hand side of the canvas to be dark, but I'm still using that flicking motion. And I'm not going all in one direction. I've brought some over the top of the other, like that. I'm to use plain blue. I didn't even wash that brush off. Plain blue. Plain blue, I'm going to do the same thing again and just flick a few of those leaves from the left hand side. So as we were doing on this side where we were building up color to make it look like it's shadowed down the bottom of the canvas here, that's what we've been doing over this side to make these leaves. Slowly building up some shadow and color coming in on the left hand side. I'm going to let that dry now. Maybe put a little bit of blue in this section here under his chin over the green, make it a little bit darker under his chin there. I'm going to leave that to dry, so I'm going to wash that brush off and leave it to dry. Now that I've cleaned that brush off, I'm going to paint the bottom part of his body here. So the bottom part of his body is plain black. So I'm loading that big brush up with plain black. I'm going to paint all of the body down the bottom here in plain black. And cover as much as I can, as fast as I can. Acrylic paints dry very quickly. 
So if you work wet and wet acrylic paints, which is almost what we're doing here, we're doing a combination of wet and wet. That's wet and wet because we painted over the top of the colors to blend them in a little bit. I'm going to be waiting for some of this to dry so I can paint on the top of this so it's wet and dry. Underneath his, his chest area there, paint that and his whole body is just about painted there with a big brush. Right. I now need to go into the smaller brush so that I can fine tune a couple of these things. So let's go to the smaller brush, which is this one. That round one. And I'm going to take black and do some finer edges in black. I want to outline some of his beak here from the corner here using the tip of the brush. So I have a point there that I can use. I'm going to take that and give him a little bit of a defining edge around his beak in black. See that? Around the whole of the bottom of his beak as well. With that brush, right up to the edge there. I need the middle bit to be a black line too. So let's define that with a black line all the way to the bottom of his bill there. If you need to add a little bit more water, do it. There we go. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. You can see that mine is a little bit more of a messy line. There, add some more strokes there. So I've got a little bit more dark across the bottom of his bill there. Let's make a little bit more there. And now at the top of his head here as well, this is going to be dark. So from there, all the way around his head here, joining up to his body, he's going to have black. And quite a bit of black. This is the top of his head, so it's quite thick. His feathers are this section. So let's do that. Got quite a thick head section there, which are feathers. And in fact, they're feathers there. So I'm going to put a few flicks of feathers coming off his head like that. You can see there's feathers across the top of his head. Pull that area up there. I want to paint under his chin as well. So under his chin, I'm going to put a black line coming round like that and going all the way to join his chest down the bottom there. So defining his, his chest. Let's give our strillets here are a bit of definition as well. So I'm going to put some shadow across the bottom of this blue uh, leaf that's coming out of the strillets here. It's a bit of shadow underneath the bottom there. And I'm going to make it go a little bit down into the stem. There's some shadow under the bottom of this leaf. So it's just still plain black. I'm using that to make the shadow area. Let's make it a bit thicker there. Let's give this one a bit of shadow as well across the bottom of that. Doesn't quite cover that so it goes to the middle section there. And I think what about putting a little bit of a black shadow underneath there just to highlight that section. Maybe one there too. Add some water. A little bit of black line there, maybe a little bit of a black line there. So we've got a bit of contrast in our flower. 
Now his eye needs to have a black eye too. So let's paint the center of his eye with black. Like that, it's got a round eye, nicely painted black. And then the last thing we're going to do is add some detail. This is basically done. Your toucan is basically done. The only thing that I would like to do is take the same brush and just add a few more extra color. This is a bright picture already, but I want to add some extra color. So I think this is, this is not quite dry in, his, in, the, in the bottom here. Um, if you look at these beautiful birds, sometimes they have a blue shine on their feathers, on the black feathers. I want to add a little bit of blue, and my black is not 100% dry, so I'm going to keep wiping my brush off as I do this. I'm going to add a few blue tints into the back here and into his head because he's got a bit of a blue shine on his feathers. I think some down here too. You're not going to see a lot of them. Maybe I just need a bit more definition in his bill here. I'm going to take a little bit of the dark green so it makes it look a little bit more like the flowers on that side there. I mean, the leaves on that side there. Just some definition in the corner there. I think because this is a nice bright picture too, I'm taking some red and I'm going to put some red highlights into his body down here too. Just a few red highlights. Pretty little things. Seems to have a little bit of a gap in colour here. So I'm going to take my orange that I made earlier, that lovely orange, and I'm going to put some more orange in that section there. Maybe a stripe of red. Just a few highlights. Now, the last thing, let's add some white. Check out your picture, see if there's anything you need to change, fix, add. I'm going to complete his bill across the top here because I can see there's some white showing there. I don't want some white showing. I'm going to make it look like that. I've got a little bit of a gap here around his face there, so I can either fill that in with black or with green like that. No more white showing there. I don't mind the white showing around this section of the canvas. Add a bit more green down the bottom there. Right, let's see. Last thing, let's put a shine in his eye. So I'm going to use the same brush again. Clean it off. Load some white on that brush. Let's give him a shine in his eye. And our toucan is done. Your signature. Wherever you want. I'm putting mine in the corner down here and I'm going to write my name there. My toucan. Enjoy your painting everybody and until next time. See you then.